I'm so excited guys, today is the day. We're going to make a wonderful video with a friend of mine who's a YouTuber and uh, you're gonna see soon what we're gonna cook. Something delicious. Good morning, welcome to Healthy Nasty Kitchen TV. I'm Giuseppe, your host, and today I'm gonna show you something different, something that I never did before on this channel because you know we do baking mainly with sourdough. Today I'm collaborating with Ho Casana Gringa from Brazil, who's a friend of mine and lives with me in Adelaide. And he's got a YouTube channel that I please want you to go and have a look. And you find the link in the description below. And we're gonna make a carbonara. So I'm gonna cook that at his place to teach him and his wife how I make it and we're gonna heat it together. So let's go inside. We go to the shopping center now and we're gonna buy some ingredients so you're gonna see how we make it. Hello guys, we are into the supermarket finally and uh, I just wanted to show you the different kind of pasta that we have. So this pasta is actually made in Adelaide in uh, Windsor Garden North and we're not gonna use this one today. Something that I picked today is this one organic. So of course when you make a carbonara you want to make it with spaghetti and for the price $1.65 for organic pasta it's amazing. We basically need three more ingredients. Carbonara is made out of four ingredients. Pasta, bacon or guanciale possibly, pecorino romano or parmesan if it's too strong for you and eggs. And I forgot I'm so upset because I actually have chickens at home I should have brought some freshly nice laid eggs from this morning. Hi guys, we are about to choose the bacon, which is very important. So in Italy, when you make the carbonara, it's basi basically made with guanciale, which is a very fatty part of the pork, which it comes underneath your throat, underneath the mouth. And of, uh, of course, I can't find guanciale everywhere in Australia. You need to find it in certain supermarkets. There is one in Adelaide where you can find it. It's Adelaide's finest supermarket, the Pasadena. But if you are a woofer like I am now, I'm looking into some other speciality. And what I actually suggest you is to find something that is a low, a low amount of fat, a big amount of fat. So we're gonna pick now the best one and you come and see us. Here we go, guys. We have finally found something that's Clo not closer and not as the same as the guanciale but something that we can use you see here we got a good line of fat so we can use the fat to be rendered in the pan to have lots of flavor and to make the meaty part very nice and crispy that's what we like when we make a carbonara so now let's go and try to find some free range eggs so I usually buy eggs that are 700 grams if I have to buy it but of course now I have chinkas at home so I don't worry anymore but we're looking for the 700 eggs free range of course, when you purchase eggs, you always want to make sure that you check the box to make sure that nothing is broken in there. So they're all perfect. We've got plenty of eggs here for three of us today for lunch. So very good choice. I just uh, wanted to let you know that unfortunately we had to stop filming in the supermarket. We were not allowed for the media laws and procedures and purposes. So it's okay. It's not a problem. We were only on the hunt for a good parmesan or pecorino cheese for the carbonara. So we usually make carbonara with a pecorino romano, which is a double salted sheep cheese milk. I don't know if everybody knows that. And we opted for two, a mix of a pecorino extra strong and an extra parmesan which are not the original one, but these are probably the closest two cheeses that we can use to resemble the flavor, the original carbonara flavor. And of course, Lucas and Danny have a home salt, pepper, olive oil if we need some, and we don't need anything else. So let's go home and start cooking. Here we are. Thank you, Lucas and Danny, for having me and give me the opportunity to cook in your own home, which is beautiful, important or longer, fantastic. <laughs> And of course, we have spent about $26 for all these ingredients, but we bought a kilo of bacon, which is $10, but we're not gonna use all of it, and we're not gonna use all the eggs, and we're not gonna use all the cheese. So probably, in total, for four people, we must have spent $10, which is very cheap. And uh, in Italy, we eat pasta, of course, lunch, dinner, many meals during the week, but we never like having bread. So I wanted to gift uh, Lucas, given that my channel is about baking mainly and business, I wanted to give him my own sourdough, so I brought here some bread that I fermented yesterday and uh, 
we are going to bake it today. So we're going to bake it in his oven, in my casserole or Dutch oven. And we're gonna have this one with the pasta. And let's start cooking. So we are ready to go. We put already the water to cook the pasta on the fire, on the stove to be able to bring it to boil. Okay, and, uh, and then we start from the bacon, of course, it's, as you remember before I said that we need to look into finding the bacon that has got the most amount of fat, if you can't get the guanciale, but that's what we found with the most amount of fat. So we're gonna search now in these beautiful slices of bacon. It smells delicious, beautiful smokiness. That's the part of the bacon that we're gonna use. Not the front that's very meaty, but the back that's very fatty. That's very important to make a carbonara that way. So we basically use, which is gonna be three of us, but let's say this recipe for four people, we're gonna use roughly about eight slices of bacon, and we're gonna remove the part that we don't use. I'm gonna trim off the meaty part. That can be used for anything else. If you wanna have breakfast tomorrow morning, you use, it, you use that one. This one, tomorrow morning for breakfast, you can mix it into your scrambled eggs, you can roast it and use it into your Caesar salad. There are very different use to be able to do it. And then we cut it into a julienne so they can crisp up. That's it, that's the amount of bacon that we will need. Breaking it apart a bit so there are no big pieces. Check if there are big pieces like this one. Just put it back in the bag or you can chop it with the knife. Okay, just making sure that all single bits are as close as possible in size so one doesn't burn before the other one is completely cooked it's gonna be delicious man i can't wait to taste it my taste buds are already salivating so now it's very important that we use a normal pan it's not necessary that you have a non-sticky pan and you need to put the stuff when it's slightly hot already so we're gonna warm it up so now we let the pan warm up a bit and then we're gonna put the pancetta in, the, the bacon, sorry. So if you have the guanciale, I wouldn't do this process. I would put the guanciale straight onto the cold pan and then turn on the flame and not putting any fat because the guanciale has got no sugar, it's just rendered and aged with salt. But the bacon, of course, is steamed and packed, cooked already. So we need to add probably some olive oil in there just to help the fat rendering down a bit. Look guys, this is a very good olive oil. I'm actually impressed by Lucas and Danny because I love this oil. This is what I use at home as well. So we're gonna put a little drizzle, not too much into the pan. It's important, don't put too much. We don't need much. We just need to help the fat of the bacon render down. This is very important. You never wanna put oil in a cold pan because you end up using too much. If you put oil in a hot surface, it will expand very quickly. You can see here, look in the pan. It's already expanded, it's very runny now, easier to spread around, you can see. So now we're gonna put the bacon into the pan. Hey guys, don't do like me usually, I usually put it out. So now you can see we're trying to spread it, spread it a bit, just help it moving around. And we need, just need to wait, stir a couple of times and be sure that the fat is slowly rendering and the bacon becomes nice and crispy. So the bacon is sizzling in the pan, you can hear it. What we're gonna do now, that's rendering, we don't worry about it. But we noticed, I noticed, that the water is boiling. The pot of water is now ready to put the pasta in. Salt is very important when you cook pasta. I know that many chefs forget about it, they don't, it doesn't seem very important, but salt actually helps you to keep the pasta al dente. If you don't put salt in the water, you will notice that the pasta will cook quicker than if you put salt in the water. So make sure that you salt your water, otherwise it doesn't absorb flavor. You are flavoring actually the water for the pasta to absorb the water. So we're gonna put a very good amount of salt. So generally salt the water. And for example, to let you know how much salt needs to be in a pasta, it needs to be like sea water. It's very important. The flavor of this water needs to be like sea water. You need to swim in the ocean and have the same flavor in your mouth. That's why my pasta never tastes good because I never put that much salt. And now you know, Danny. So I'm an experienced chef, as you know. I've been chef for 20 years, more than 20 years. So I can remember how much a portion of spaghetti looks like. I can feel it in my hand. So that's roughly 80 grams of spaghetti. So it's three of us. One, two, three. And because I know that they're gonna love it too much, I'm gonna put a bit more. 
And I just remember, we need to put the bread in the oven so the pot is warming up. Take it out. Remove the lid. And now we're gonna put it into the pot. Close it. And bake it. Half an hour, 200 degrees, and you see how beautiful it will come out. It's very important when you put the pasta in the water that you mix it. Otherwise, it will stick together and it won't cook properly. As you can see, the bacon is rendering all this fat. It's becoming nice and crispy, nice and colored. Beautiful. Now we're gonna crack the eggs and prepare the mix to emulsify the pasta at the end, which is the most important part of the carbonara. You usually use two egg yolks per serve. If you are tidy and you don't have that budget, you can use one egg and one egg yolk. So you can use some of the egg whites as well and you can serve three people with that amount. The bacon is ready. We need to remove it off the pan, leave the fat into the pan and preserve it. its crispiness. It's very important. I like the bacon to be crispy and not to be soggy. To have two different textures in your dish, even at home, just to give your palate a bit of fun, you can leave a quarter or one third of the bacon into the pan so it can flavor a bit more and you just use the normal bacon that we just uh, reserved on the side to crisp it up to make it as a garnish on top but that will be the top that what, what i would do in my restaurant so that's the fake parmesan and that's the fake pecorino remember what i said at the beginning the pecorino is a cheap cheese so we're gonna grate half of each to flavor a bit more have a bit more depthness into the dish I think the pasta is ready, almost, and I think I need to keep an eye on it before it goes overcooked. Well, it looks cooked, but you always need to taste it. One minute away, and then we're ready to rock and roll. Now we need to get ready with the sauce. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use some of the cooking water and deglaze the pan. The pan. That is going to be the dressing of the pasta because in Italy, we like to cook the pasta a bit at the end in the sauce. Lucky with this pot, easy way. Look at this pasta, it will suck up all that beautiful flavor. You know what's happening now, everybody loves to watch that. I remember my kids staring at me, how do you do that, dad? And now I'm 12 years old, he's doing the same. He's tossing the pasta. That's what everybody loves to watch. Nothing falls off the pan, and the chef tossing the, the pasta in the pan. Look at that. And the sauce, it's all been absorbed by the pasta. There's no liquid at the bottom. Can you see? Now we add the egg yolks into the cheese. this beautiful mixture into the pasta. This is the tricky part of carbonara where everybody messes up and makes scrambled eggs. So that's why I mix egg yolks with cheese. So you make this mixture, ready to go into the pasta. The flame is off, mixture is ready, pasta is still very hot, wanting to take a sauce. So we're gonna put the egg mix in there. some pasta to clean the bowl from the excess. Beautiful amount of pepper. You can see how the pasta is coated. It's wonderful. Here we go, ready to plate up. We do a beautiful dish for the lady, which is the only one today, so let's plate it up for her. A big amount of spaghetti roller, like we are in a fine dining restaurant. How we just put crispy bacon that we served before. Be silent, it's too delicious. Don't tell everybody. Here we go, carbonara is ready. I reckon it's a very simple dish. If you have somebody that can show you how to do it from scratch, from the beginning. And look how beautiful and refined that looks. And it's just a plate of food made with four ingredients. Very cheap, as I said at the beginning as well. Let's bring it to Dani, let's see what she thinks about it. Here we go, Danny. Be honest, tell me what you think if you ever had something like this 
If you haven't had carbonara before, I would like you to tell me what you think about it, about this one. Thank you. I'm also going to give her a bit of wine. That's a very good idea. Yeah, man. That's Italian restaurant to a Brazilian family. Not mentioning the wine is Australian, right? So we get a mix of all cultures here. flavors are awesome. The pasta is perfectly cooked and perfectly salted. <laughs> Perfect. It's awesome. My, my pleasure. Thank you for having me and I hope to cook for you guys many more times. Like, uh, and really... You know what? We should eat as well. Yes, let's go. Yeah? Let's yeah? put it down. The bread! We need to remember about it. The lead, the lead. We need to take off the lead. Bone. Another 10 minutes and it will be nice and crusty like we all like it. Shall we put um Italian song now? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> no. We can put a Brazilian one. Uh, let's put a bit of it. Ching. Oh yeah, cheers. Yay! Try it, babe. Mm. Mm. Oh, this wine is awesome. <laughs> Mm. Good man? Mm. That is fantastic. Mm. Not just because of the camera is there? No, 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 no. Okay. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> the bread is ready. We need to clean the plate. Nice and hollow as it should be. And I always preach to tell people, do not cut bread when it comes out of the oven. But we can't resist, so I'm gonna cut it. You can see it's still smoky, look at that. Can you see the smoke coming out of the loaf? And go into the pan with the bread. That's how you eat in Italy, guys. Once you eat your pasta and the sauce stays in the plate, you go with a piece of bread and you make a scarpetta, it's called. A little shoe. And you fill up the shoes with the sauce. And then you eat it. Mm. That is unbelievable. Apart from the carbonara that you probably have learned how to make, I would like to say thank you to Danny and Lucas for having me and to help me create this video. And uh, I would like you, my audience, to subscribe to their channel and you find the link in the description below. And of course, it's not only YouTube, you can find them on Instagram, on Facebook, uh, at Casal Nagringa, if it's correct. Yeah, yeah, that's it. But then, you guys, you need to learn Portuguese, I'm well, sorry. <laughs> well, another option to learn another language, not only cooking, and you know what? I think I'll dig into this carbonara. See you next time, guys.